Most people have no idea what M2 SSDs are actually good. They'll see a Samsung sticker and say it's the best. They'll see an advertised speed of 7,000 megabytes per second and say that one's the best. But those people don't actually understand what a good SSD is. Luckily, I've used hundreds of them with first-hand experience of what a good and a bad SSD is. I'm going to explain what each spec of an SSD actually means and crucially how it will affect the way your PC runs. It might just surprise you. We're going to go from least important to most important in a fun twist. But before we do that, I've got to start my appearance. So I'll see you there. Let's start with speed and generation. Wait, hang on. Didn't I just say that we're starting with the least important? Yeah, that's right. The raw speed actually does not matter as much as you think. You see, the slowest M2 SSD drives, even they clock in at around 2000 megabytes per second, which is plenty fast for 99% of users. And there are other features on an SSD that are far more important. So I would actually not even look at the speed of the SSD until all the other factors are taken into account. You should also bear in mind what generation of SSD your motherboard will support, i.e. there's no point getting a Gen 5 SSD if your motherboard only supports Gen 4. That said, it doesn't mean speed isn't important at all. It is, and it can help with upcoming features like direct storage, just that there's a bit more to it. And if you stay with me, I'll tell you why. Next up is memory buffering. As far as I'm concerned, if it doesn't have memory buffering, I'm not buying it. The performance difference really is that stark. But what is memory buffering and how does it affect performance? Your SSD in basic terms works by storing data on blocks. When you move data around, the blocks have to rearrange. Each time this happens, the controller on the SSD has to work out how it's going to do this. Now, if you have a memory buffer, this can speed up the process of working out how it's going to move the data. The main function is to hold a data map of the SSD so it can pinpoint transfers, and there's a couple of other small benefits as well. And this is going to improve the day-to-day -day experience of using the SSD. On an SSD with no memory buffering, you'll notice that while well, trying to use your PC while copying files or updating games, the whole thing's going to feel really sluggish. Whereas with a buffered SSD, the PC will still be nice and snappy while multitasking. Okay, so I've sold you on getting a memory buffered SSD, but I didn't tell you that there are two types. There's DRAM cache and there's HMB, and let me tell you about each of those briefly. DRAM is the best of the two. It's a dedicated chip of memory, same as your RAM sticks in your PC, to perform the memory buffering function. As it's on the SSD physically, it has the lowest latency because it's closer. We've also got HMB, and that's host memory buffer. This works in a similar way, but instead of being directly on the SSD itself, the SSD will carve off a small portion of your system's RAM to use for this purpose. In real life usage, DRAM and HMB, they're both good options, but DRAM will just be that little bit snappier. But the real takeaway here is to make sure the SSD has either DRAM or at least HMB on board for the best experience. But what's the hard part of all that? It's actually finding out which ones have DRAM or HMB in the first place, because it's not obvious. Sadly, this is a bit labor intensive and the best way is to go to PC Part Picker, sort the SSD you want by lowest price, and then you just have to Google each model to see if it has DRAM, HMB, or has no memory buffer at all. I'll put a list of DRAM and HMB drives I've used in the description if that helps, but I don't know all of them, guys. There's hundreds of them out there. <laughs> Next up is brand name and reliability. But don't tear my head off and call me a brand slag just yet. Because I'm just a regular slag. This isn't me saying, oh, Samsung is always the best, because actually they aren't always the best. What I'm saying is, don't buy a no-name, knockoff brand, because chances are, the drive will be crap and it will die prematurely. You'll also want to get a drive with a good warranty and lifespan. This can be found out with the TBW or terabytes written number. This is the number of terabytes you can exchange on the drive before it reaches its inevitable demise. As a minimum, 300 TBW is good, but really 600 plus is where I prefer to shop. And to put it into context, 600 TBW means that a one terabyte drive can write 82 gigabytes every day for 20 years before dying. Pretty good. Another aspect of durability is the flash type used. So there's SLC, MLC, TLC, and QLC. Each refers to the density of data that can be stored on one cell of storage material. QLC can store four times the amount of data per cell than SLC, 
That actually makes it less durable, so QLC is often the cheapest but lowest quality, with SLC being the most expensive but highest quality. But for our use in a PC, TLC is the ideal medium, and you'll find that most high performance drives use TLC. There is some other magic with small chunks of what's called SLC caching, but we'll leave that for now. The bottom line is you want a TLC drive from a trusted manufacturer with a good TBW of at least 300, simple as that. And now for the most important factor of all, capacity. It's all very well and good getting a lovely drive with good speed, high endurance and DRAM on board as we've been talking about, but if it's not big enough to store the files that you want, what's the point? At the end of the day, you need to get the size that you need, even if it comes at the detriment of everything else that we've talked about. The point of storage is to store stuff, so if there's not enough storage to store the stuff, then guess what? You're stuffed, mate. So we're right back where we started in the kitchen, and hopefully I looked a bit more handsome during the video than I do in the intro and the outro. Hopefully it's been helpful. Here's a quick rundown of what a good SSD is in order of importance, okay? So a good SSD has enough storage space. You've got to be able to fit all of your stuff on it. It should have strong reliability with a recognized brand like Kingston, TLC Flash, and at least 300 TBW or more. It should have a DRAM cache or HMB at least. So this has a DRAM cache. High speeds, if you need them, are nice, but you know, even something like a Gen 3 Transcend drive like this is going to be absolutely fine for most people. All the drives I've been lobbing around and showing you on screen are high quality drives that I'd only use in PCs nowadays. But there we go, did you like the guide? If so, you probably like our build videos, and there's one linked on screen for you to look at now. But until then, subscribe, and I'll catch you.